I guess I'm live. Um, <clears throat> so I want to touch on something that Sean touched on earlier, and that's about not feeling that you're getting enough support in your fitness journey. Um, so let me give you a little bit of background. <clears throat> a lot of you know me and know what I'm about, but um, I I started training in 1995 after a bad breakup, and as a lot of you know, and I've told you the same, breakups make bodybuilders. You want to rebuild yourself <clears throat> after having been crushed um, by the supposed love of your life. Some of us just have these delusions. Hey, Barry Leonard. Um, <clears throat> but in 1996, I did my first bodybuilding show. Barry Leonard was there. Uh, his whole family was there. My family was there. And it was a big deal. Um, and it was fun getting ready for it. I'm very uh, goal-oriented. As you know, <clears throat> I finished fifth, top five, but dead last. Fifth out of five. I was maybe 156 and three-quarter pounds. I was exactly that. Um, and I had hair. A little bit different. Um, but, you know, everybody tried to build me up. I had my team there, right? Oh, you got robbed, you got robbed. You know, looking back at the pictures now, placing was sound. I uh, didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I competed again in 2003, and it was a little bit better. I think I was third out of four, next to last. What's up, Daryl? Um, <clears throat> 2006, it was a larger class. I didn't do any cardio. Um, I thought I looked great. Again, diluted, um, and I finished dead last. And my family traveled um, to that show as well, all the way up to Annapolis. I remember it. I was driving, and I was really on edge and nervous and irritated. And um, I was driving everybody crazy. And I didn't handle losing very well at all. I was asked by my loved ones not to compete again if that's what it's going to be like. So I honored their wishes. The other thing about me is I have severe chronic depression and anxiety. And I'm a very goal-oriented person, as I said. So if I don't have something at the end of a road, I'm not going to do too well. And I put on about 60 to 70 pounds in the meantime, um, none of my friends would tell me I was fat. You need one of those mean friends to say, yo, Dalton, you know, you got fat. What the hell? Um, but I didn't have those at the time. 2013, I moved to Hopewell, Virginia. Still here. And uh, the kids here are a little bit different than teaching at private school. <laughs> they will just tell you exactly how they feel. Uh, September 20th, 2014, JoJo raised her hand in class and said, Senior Dalton, Senior Dalton. I was like, oh, yeah, grammar question. I ran over and she said, you know, you buff, but you ain't as buff as you used to be. I heard that. The very next day, um, I went back to Gold's Gym and I started training secretly with the goal of competing again in 2015. I didn't tell anybody that's what I was going to do, but I knew. I did have support um, from Rich Hallis. Um, he asked me to start helping out with the wrestling team, and those kids work hard, and it's all about the weight. So I set a goal to, to make it to 180 from around 220 in November by the end of the wrestling season, and I, and I hit it. How? I tracked my meals. Every single thing. Now, I wasn't to the point where I was weighing out um, everything at that point, but I was still kind of eyeballing it, 
and I was close enough, and I was doing cardio. <gasps> and moving helps, people. Moving helps. Um, so I did compete again in 2015. Finished fourth out of five in two different classes. But I was back on stage again. It felt good. And there was, you know, some kind of trophy at the end of the whole thing. Um, which some of those I've thrown away since because I've got a lot and I don't have room for everything. And they're just trophies. Um, <clears throat> 2016... I competed at that same show where I finished dead last, where my family basically asked me to stop bodybuilding. <clears throat> but something else happened here. I came in absolutely ready. Um, and I beat every single person there, and I earned my first natural bodybuilding pro card. November of 2016, I competed in my first and only pro bodybuilding show. <clears throat> um, and I had two people come to watch me there. 2017, I earned two more pro cards, both in classic physique. One with the AMBF, hey, Kent Beerley, and another with uh, a three-letter organization, which we don't like very much also a natural organization i won't compete with them again that organization i didn't mention i was even helping them promote a show in hopewell and um turns out they didn't even have my class my pro class that i was going to do and um i said well screw it I would do powerlifting in the meantime until I want to do bodybuilding again. And my first powerlifting meet was in 2018. Um, my support... Hey there, Sean Murphy. My support was... the other powerlifters. And... Hey, Mary. Um... <clears throat> It can be hard. I don't always need a cheering section. What I do need and what I have are people that support me along the way. I don't need butts in the seats. They've been with me every step of the way. Once you're competing, nobody's going to do it for you. They're not. Um... But my point of view is a little bit different. <clears throat> I've always got a competition at the end. A lot of you um, are just trying to change your lifestyle. You're trying to get healthier. You're trying to get leaner. You're trying to get stronger. But for me, there always has to be something at the end of that road. Um, so I've done two powerlifting meets, placed second in Masters Nationals in April. Um, I set a couple of Virginia records. Mostly deadlift, because who cares about anything else? Robert Oberst, you're crazy. Um, you got a deadlift. Uh, 2019, <clears throat> thanks to Jeff Richardson. Yes, you, Jeff. Um, I came out to Mayhem and tried Strongman of Sean Murphy. Now, I got a little taste of it before <clears throat> at Primal Strength in Charlottesville. But we were kind of left to our own devices, Muhammad and I. <laughs> you can imagine that. Um, but now my life is so much more balanced, literally. Um, you know, when I was competing in bodybuilding, I was as light as 168, 172 pounds, shredded. Um, I looked like a balding Greek god. Um, and it was fun to look like that. It didn't feel very good to look like that. There's a lot of pressure, um, especially when people say, hey, look at this older guy doing stuff. And so I started to get sponsors, believe it or not. Companies started to believe in me because I'm not full of shit. I'm a teacher. I'm older. Um, but I didn't want to do that anymore. I pretty much found my niche 
at this point between powerlifting and strongman. Strongman is a lot more active. I like to move. Um, and I like to learn because all that stuff's real new. And Sean Murphy's a hell of a teacher. I'm not a bad teacher myself, but I don't know enough at this point to teach others. But my life is a lot more balanced at this point. Um, I won't worry about making weight. I'm not going to choose a weight class where I'm going to have to cut weight. I'm going to be comfortable where I am. I'm going to be strong and as fast as I need to be. If I need to get down, I know how to do it. Do it the right way. I'll take 12 weeks to get to that weight. I'm not going to do it and cut 10 pounds in a week. A couple of you watching know, what's up, Joe? Mighty Joe, uh, that that's a bad idea. You're going to lose all your strength. Um, not all your strength, but you're going to be exhausted. And you don't want to be exhausted going into something where you need to perform at a high level. So, support. I've never had this kind of support before with Mayhem. I've never had the feeling of team that I have now. There are 10 of us competing. 10 out of 85 athletes. I don't know what that's going to be like. Um, but I know I love training with these people. I love going there multiple times per week. I'm going to miss that once I start teaching again. Um, but I'm not used to that kind of constant support. It's really nice. And we push each other. We give each other shit. And it's fun. I am wide open there. But as far as my eating habits now, um, it's pretty much ice cream every night. If I want snacks, I'll have it. Um, but I'm staying right around 215 pounds. And that's a really good place for me. So if you're feeling bad about your family not understanding or not wanting to take part, a lot of you, it's still really new for you, and you're really gung-ho right now, and it's really easy to get burned out, and you piss off a lot of people in your life if they don't have the same amount of passion about something that you currently do. A lot of it is jealousy. So you need to tone some of that stuff down and keep it. Don't talk about it all the time, even though you want to, okay? Because um, you need those relationships, okay? You need that love. And you can look great. You can have abs. You can be incredibly strong. But if you don't have people in your life, you're going to be incredibly alone. Okay? So... You have to decide what's best for not only you, but for the people in your life. No man is an island, okay? So remember that. Be a good person. And come out and see us on August 10th. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, it's going to be me at the end of the day. Um, but it's my first strong man. Come see. It's going to be nuts. We're going to suffer People like to see us suffer, but we're all going to get through this or we're going to have a great time. Um, what's up, man? Um, so that's about it. Um, you can watch this when it gets posted. Um, I told Sean I would take notes. So I wouldn't ramble as much. Oops. <laughs> but, you know, th those people who are putting up with you right now in your new fitness journey, be nice to them. Talk to them. Don't try to push them into doing what you're doing. What I do is very extreme. When my loved ones are ready, they're like, hey, would you mind if I came and joined you? I would not mind. <laughs> I'll pack for you. Much love.